Hi, everybody. Uh, it's amazing to be here. Uh, my name is Jack. You know, I started my career 10 years ago, uh, right here when I came to training for two months in the summer of 2010 at Barclays Capital, right over at Canary Wharf. And I could not believe it if you told me then that 10 years later, I will be up on stage talking about not just the transformation of the future of finance, but the future of the entire global economy. And I owe that thanks to the, all the people in this room and beyond who have worked tirelessly in your roles to make Bitcoin to where it is today. So please give yourself a huge round of applause. I also want to give a quick shout out to our community in China. So, now, uh, before we get into the point of the talk, I want to give you a quick update about each of our businesses, starting with Flow. We started Flow SV at a time of critical need, when Binance threatened to list, delist BSV, along with other exchanges, from the face of the earth. We got Flow up within two days of their threat, and with all of your support, um, for the first time I'm sharing that we traded over 500,000 Bitcoins in less than 10 months. <laughs> Not as well known is our understated uh, OTC desk, and we've helped large institutional investors either acquire uh, or invest Bitcoins to the tune of 250,000 BSV as well. <laughs> Next, that's allowed us to fund a lot into our passion, which is Relay. Relay, we started as a beta product April 1st, launching with a blog post that made it look like an April Fool's joke. But I'm not kidding you, we are gonna try and make onboarding to Bitcoin the most seamless thing for every end user. We're still in beta, but these are some of our small accomplishments. 3,000 users have given our app a try. Over 100,000 cross-platform rails. So these are top-ups or payments to various uh, mobile wallets in the fiat world have occurred on Relay. We started as a mobile app, but we also saw the need for, to create an interface that was cross-platform. We'd be very excited to be the second wallet to be integrated into apps like Twitch, Baymail, Streamanity, and more. That building relay made us so excited. But as you know, a lot of Bitcoin companies are only one, two, or three people. And we felt the importance of gathering at a critical time. When I remember when relay started, this was before Weather SV, there were less than 3,000 transactions per day. And how are our miners going to get fed unless we feed them transactions? So we got people coming from South America, North America, Europe, everywhere in the world to a remote location in Bali. And it was some of the best times of our lives to share values, to share insight, and our team could not have learned more from people that came. So I want to give a huge round of applause to both the Cambrian 1 and Cambrian 2, which just ended in Lisbon. And I want you guys who did attend to please stand up and give you guys a, a round of applause. Now, there's a bug on the internet, a bug that I didn't really realize, because I'm not a developer myself, but it's pervasive. And that bug is that the internet is missing micropayments. You think, okay, but I use my credit card, I buy things online, who cares? No, you should care, because every single minute, every single second, every interaction you spend online should have a micropayment occurring, okay? If you look at the early internet companies, these are no better looking than the Bitcoin companies being started today. It's important to look at what they look like at the beginning. I remember being, I think, in grade six, trying out Google for the first time. How would I know uh, anything other than this is really cool? For the first time, I get to search things. And as you, th you would think that as the internet grew to three billion users, as these companies got more and more resources to make their products better, that the world would be a better place. But nothing further could be the truth. 
the more resources these companies got, the worse they became. And now the internet is a place that is beyond broken. Because without micropayments, you know, none of us can make money, which is fine. Maybe I'm just browsing the internet. Maybe I'm just killing time. But if I'm not making money and the content creator is not making money, then the only way to make money for these platforms is through the back door with a huge check from advertisers. And so they're incentivized not to make your life better, not so that you can fulfill your potential, but so that you can waste time on their platform so that they can squeeze money out of you. And so every app should be a Bitcoin app. Every app needs to be a Bitcoin app. But don't kid yourself. That does not mean every app will be a Bitcoin app. For that to be true, it's not because we hold Bitcoin. It's not because we understand the promise of Bitcoin. It has to be easier to build a Bitcoin app than to build any other app. And I couldn't have known this without doing it, but through building products myself, through seeing people at Cambrian hack together a product in a weekend, I know for a fact it is actually easier to build a Bitcoin app for a number of reasons. You can start like those simple websites, but you can evolve. And because Bitcoin scales, your app scales. You don't have to worry about all the things that these companies have worried about as they scale up their infrastructure. You can leverage the network effects of your peers as data is interoperable so that you can share in the global network effect. We believe in this idea of an internet built on Bitcoin so much so that today I'm announcing output capital. We are going to invest in those applications built on Bitcoin but not like the way investors do it today. You see, you're being lied to by people about how difficult it is to build a company, how glossy and amazing these Bitcoin startups are, and how you need their money and their uh, influence and their contacts for you to be successful. So we're going to be different in the way we invest on three key metrics. One, we don't want your equity. We don't want you to IPO in 10 years. Who knows if your company will exist in 10 years, okay? Our returns are gonna come exclusively from Bitcoin transaction outputs. Not this talk about building microtransactions for your end user so that they can you know, own their own data. How about what is the relationship between you and your investor? If they just own a term sheet and the only way they can sell their stake in your business is via you going IPO on the public markets that has nothing to do with Bitcoin 10 years from now, then they're going to encourage you to build weird moats on the blockchain, viruses that will take away from the potential of Bitcoin. We want investors to take a return in the same microtransactions. So a user will like a content artist uh, video. In that, by being the platform, by being the developer who built that interface, you'll take, let's say, one cent. That one cent can then be split between the founders, the team members, and the investor. Second, we want to have our stake, our percentage share in your business, just like Bitcoin does. Why? Because Bitcoin is a red queen game. Okay? We might be a support to you today, but you're going to have to innovate again, again and again tomorrow. And you need to have your cap table clean so that you can continue to inspire in, uh, uh, innovation. And we invest in under 72 hours. I really wish this number was lower. As we figure out more things, we want to make that number lower. There's no time to wait three to six months doing due diligence docs, sending PowerPoints. Why are we sending PowerPoints? Your business is on chain. I can see from your Bitcom how your business is doing, whether you are lying. Does your business actually work the way it is? And are you actually paying out to the investor the way you say you are? because you do not have time to wait. As you're sitting here watching this presentation, there's a developer in South America, there's a developer in Southeast Asia who are building the very companies that will disrupt the people in this room. And so let capital not be a deterrent to your growth, let capital be an accelerant to your growth. And so if you're interested in any of that, and by the way, if you think that this is just me throwing around money and whatever, I'm not, I don't have that much money because you don't actually need that much money to make your business succeed. And the investment decision can be fast because, again, we can see what you're doing. So if you have interested, please uh, just send an email 
include what you do on chain to input output capital so that we can make this internet built on Bitcoin happen much faster. Whether it's funding the future or building a platform with fiat rails that can help you build the future faster, or the next version of Flow, which we hope to come in the following year, trading those rev same revenue streams. Think of it like the public markets, trading commodities, trading digitized currencies with Flow. Or eventually, as we take on a leadership position in this society, making sure that our values are being delivered to the wider audience so that people don't fear a world of what it's like on Bitcoin, not just for developers, but as a message. That's what I want to do. Thank you very much. <laughs> nope. Nope. Sorry. Uh, we got, can we get the slides back? There was one more thing. I have two minutes, you know. <laughs> OK. When we started Relay in beta, we tried to learn from the best Bitcoin and fiat mobile wallets in the world. But the power of Bitcoin astounded us to a level we could never imagine. And that's why today, I'm excited to show you the new RelayX. A wallet that does not show you your balance, that does not have send field, not even your full transaction history. <laughs> Why? Because we don't want a thousand wallets, we want a thousand interfaces to the wallet. You can see how much you earn on Twitch right now. Why can't you see what your relay balance is on Twitch? And the reason we take a step back from our user interface is because developers shouldn't be working for the wallet. The wallet should be working for the developer, OK? What can you do? Well, this is the most radical and uh, powerful conception of a wallet ever made in Bitcoin. You're going to be able to authorize any app and let them choose to show your balance, your transaction history, your pay mail, as you wish. You're going to be able to pay those payment requests with any fiat or any other form of money you want, just like that. And you know, the last 10 years, so many merchants have adopted various sorts of cryptocurrency, be it BTC, Ethereum, BCH, etc. And there's a scare out there that we can't take BSV. Well, by enab enabling you to pay to any blockchain, we want to thank all the merchants for today accepting BSV. And lastly, this is not all show and smokes. Uh, the fiat rails to pay out have been a challenge for us. And we're working tirelessly to make that experience better. So that one day, you can just carry one wallet and any wallet and pay across any services. So let's fix that bug on the internet together. I'm counting on you. Thank you so much. Hello, I'm Hannah Jackson for CoinGeek.com, and I'm here with Jack Liu from RelayX. Lovely for you to join us here. Great to be back in London. Now, uh, I've heard that you've just announced a crazy big feature, so tell me all about that. Well, we removed the entire user interface from the wallet. We have that much confidence to let other developers build the interface. So now in Relay, you cannot check your balance, you can't see your transaction history, you can't send funds, there's no send field. We realized that just like you don't see the AT&T company who provides you the data, and you look at internet built by other people, it's not about wallets like Money Button, Hand Cash, and Relay owning the entire user experience and having apps be squeezed inside. What we believe is that people can now show their creativity. You can imagine a new balance app that shows you how much money you're spending each month. You can imagine some other app that pulls in your taxes. So all you need to do is now just log in with Relay and you can think of it almost like your Google 2FA type of app and let the wallets and other apps on Bitcoin surface on top. Wow, now that is a big announcement. And another big thing that you've announced is um, a new investment fund. So tell me more about that. 
Yeah, this is uh, through running Cambrian, we noticed how quickly developers can build on Bitcoin. And we think that the traditional venture capital is broken because they, the investors can only return money from the company having a final exit, whether in the form of acquisition or in the form of IPO. But Bitcoin uniquely allows you to have micro exits. Every time a user uses Bitcoin, you could be paying your company. A little amount, which might be one cent per interaction, could be going a tenth of it to the founders, a tenth of it to some employees, and split even further to investors. So it's called Output Capital is what we launched, named after the Bitcoin transaction output, where you can send money to different people, and the entire returns of the fund will come out of Bitcoin transactions on chain. Wow, 2020 definitely sounds like a very exciting year for you. And you have a lot on your plate. So you've just hosted your second Cambrian SV boot camp in Lisbon. So how does that compare to the first in Bali? Well, the first was one of its kind, but the second, the teams came together and even the number of people was the same. We had 70% new faces and each member ended up launching two or three products because people got very familiar with the Bitcoin architecture. So it was just an explosion of announcements that we couldn't even keep up with. People were not waiting for, you know, papers to be written out and conventions and meetings. People were making decisions right there. I was shocked being two weeks ahead of London that people were launching products at Cambrian Live. Uh, you're a very busy man, and I don't doubt that you've got loads more things going on. So what can we expect to see from you and your companies in the future? Well, I want to set an example for people much more talented than myself. You know, I'm not even a developer, so it's all about pushing yourself to the limit. And I think people need to know that about Bitcoin. So for me, uh, I would love to see our Relay X product truly mature and come out of beta. And let's see those 1,000 companies being built. Fantastic. Well, good luck with everything.